Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 7th, 2018 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Xavier came across an interesting piece of malware that he wrote up today. One of the features of this malware was that it's using PowerShell to compile C sharp code on the fly. The code then appears to attempt to connect a command control server. At this point, Xavier has not received any response from this server. And Elliot Thompson found a neat way to steal Wi-Fi credentials from users using Google Chrome. The main problem here was that Google Chrome did prefill credentials for non-HTTPS sites. This has been fixed in the latest version of Google Chrome, but the way this attack works is, well, Pretty straightforward if you think about it that the attacker would impersonate the login website the router website on a wi-fi network then it would trick the user to visit that particular website and of course google chrome would automatically prefill credentials in general, it's always dangerous to have a browser or any tool prefill credentials on non HTTPS websites because it's always possible to impersonate these sites. And then, of course, browsers wouldn't recognize that they actually connect to the wrong website. And the register has an interesting preview of a paper to be released by researchers of the Fraunhofer Institute for Secure Information Technology. In this paper, apparently details are going to be released in how to trick certificate authorities into issuing you a bad certificate for a domain you don't own. The problem here apparently is that some certificate authorities are using DNS to verify domain ownership and, well, DNS responses can be spoofed. Now, they're talking here about an interesting way to actually spoof DNS. You probably know that in order to spoof DNS correctly, you have to get the right query ID. Now, what they're doing here is that, of course, initially the certificate authority will send a DNS request to the respective authoritative DNS server, and then this DNS server will respond. Now, they're apparently here first and spoofing an ICMP error that indicates that the response needs to be fragmented. And the size of the fragment they're proposing, essentially the MTU they're sending here, would have the valid responder just send a first fragment that includes the query ID and nothing else. So now an attacker really only needs to spoof the second fragment with the actual answer and no longer needs to guess the right query ID. Sounds like an interesting technique, probably not so easy to get all the timing right here, but don't forget attacks don't always have to work. And even if this only works, sometimes it's still a valid attack. I think in part the problem here is also that these ICMP messages are advertising a very small MTU, which actually isn't always accepted by servers. So really looking forward to more details in the full paper. The full paper will also name certificate authorities that are vulnerable to this particular type of attack. And Cisco released 16 different security bulletins this week. One of the highlights was Struts 2. A number of Cisco products do use Struts 2. Now, not all of them are vulnerable to the latest flaw because it does depend on specific configuration choices. However, Cisco also states that the patch they released right now doesn't address all the products that are vulnerable. So definitely pay attention and make sure that the products that are vulnerable aren't directly exposed to the internet if possible. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.